All right, guys, we're going to uh, get set up today for a little test. I made me a uh, little data record sheet. I'm going to, uh, I numbered every one of my magazines. And um, we're going to run a little function test today. A little engineering test, if you so you will. Um, we'll be finding out the uh, bobs and wows of these magazines and uh, for those of you who don't know engineering terms I'm not an engineer but I work around a lot of engineers on a daily basis and with complex machinery which that's what firearms are complex machinery they're not really you know murdering weapons they're just a tool but it's not what the video is about anyway but I'll go ahead and explain it to y'all before I get 5,000 comments asking what's about a bob and a wow a bob is a uh, best of the best and a wow is the uh, worst of the worst so talking to a few people on there first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my gas block loose and uh, check the alignment of it today. I will not be able to do that here. I'm gonna have to take it over to my shop because my vice and all my tools is over there for the AR. I don't really have a good workbench over here yet because we had to move, but that's another story. But uh, I just went down and labeled all of my magazines, one through 11 I didn't bother labeling the P mag because it's the only one I've got so I doubt very seriously I'll mix it in <laughs> but um we're gonna run three tests um, I have to go pick up some more ammo to, to do this test but I'm gonna run uh, one round after I check the alignment of the gas block I'm gonna run one round of five five six I know they're loaded at a higher pressure so we'll check them out and I do have some steel we're going to try after I check the alignment and see if it uh, if it runs good and then we're going to run just some brass you know maybe some Monarch Remington you know whatever's locally cheap so I'm not going to get online and order 500 rounds for this little test but the gun's puzzling me this is how I figure out systematically go through and figure out what the red X is so I can isolate in on the exact problem and fix it and not go through and put in a new buffer, new buffer tube, new buffer spring change out the gas block and then come find out it's a magazine problem so uh, thanks for all the good ideas. I'm going to check into all of them. I uh, really appreciate the help. Um, I think this test is going to... First thing I'm going to do, I'm told that if you take this gas block off, where the uh, gas is actually going through the uh, block, it should be making a ring on the barrel, especially since i got about 700 rounds through it. And I'll be able to see if it's lined up because I have it backed all the way up against the shoulder of the barrel I'm told I might actually need to move it off a little bit because it needs a little bit of space like if you had a regular handguard plate or the uh, ring the little beauty ring ceiling ring I like to leave it open where I can clean inside here without having to take all that crap off but that's kind of hard to fit through these little holes but anyways we're going to do that we're going to check the uh, gas block alignment and, um, and then after that, we're going to do a function check with all the mags. You know, fire one round, see if it locks out. And then uh, we'll go from there. I will video it and get back to you and let you know how it goes. Um, got a few things i got to run to do this morning. Hopefully, I'll be able to do this test today. But I don't want to go out and burn out. 
I gotta order some more ammo. I don't wanna go burn out a couple hundred rounds today because I gotta shoot tomorrow that I gotta go to. I'd really like to have the rifle locking back on every magazine, but we'll see if we get that problem isolated. But I will record the data from the 5.56 five, brass um, and steel and just I'll video it and then it's another reason why I like videos because what you think in your mind's happening I know when I first did the uh, um, function check on this gun a lot of times I would rack the bolt back and make sure the gun was empty you know for all the safety Nazis on the YouTube and a lot of times I would reach up when it did lock back and slap it not even thinking slap the uh, bolt release and close it forward then I'd have to rack it back after I done dump the mag out rack it back so I, I went back and looked through the video and I, I noticed that I was doing that and sometimes it just wasn't locking back so uh, I can't remember the guy's name he I guess he was really closely watching the video so he's seen it and knows exactly what I'm talking about so heads up buddy I'll annotate you in the bottom because you the one that uh, I got. I guess I was just so excited and shooting the gun. And after 12 months of gathering parts and building it. But, uh, anyways, we're going to do that. And uh, any more comments, advice, you know, said good or bad, I won't, I won't ream nobody out too bad for giving me bad comments on this one. So. Just don't be stupid, you know. Don't say it's because it's a AR, get an AK. That ain't the problem. You can make any gun run good if you have the time and uh, resources available. But I just thought I would share that with y'all, what I'm going to do with this little project. I know I've rambled on way longer than probably anybody wants to listen to my voice. So now we're going to start doing the testing. All right, I'm gone. Oh, bye. I will be using Tula and wolf just because it's the cheap shit you can get around here for you know four or five dollars a box and I will be using you know some Remington when I do my brass test or Monarch you know they're seven eight dollars a box locally because if it'll run if it'll work with this this would be considered I guess the the Bob I mean excuse me the wow of the ammo being the worst of the worst underpowered steel case stuff and the uh, penetrator rounds 5.56 five, would probably be my uh, bobs in the um, ammo department but we'll just try it out and see how it goes see if we can't isolate out this problem and get her squared away just give you a little taste of how I methodically go in and figure out what's exactly wrong with a gun and try and fix it all right, I'm out of here. Like I said, any comments, questions, concerns, send them my way. Uh, and if you like it, if you like the channel, subscribe. If you don't, that's cool. I'm not out here to get subs. Uh, I like the commerce. I like the interact, you know, being able to interact with like-minded people. And, you know, if, if you like it, click subscribe and favorite it, you know, do whatever. Dislike it. Thumb it up, thumb it down. It's your business. All right. Appreciate it. I'm out of here. All right, guys. Well, I took my gas block loose. I don't know if you can see this. You can see the little, little ring around the um, gas port. It was slightly off-centered. It looks like it was centered, but it looks like it was canted a little bit down towards this end. You can see by the little ring around the barrel where the gas was actually, you know, contacting the, the barrel. So we'll mark that off and mark the gas tube. I'll pour it up the gas block off, and then we'll take it over to the shop and line all that up, make sure that's perfectly dead center. Because it does look like it's just off a hair. 
I don't know if that was enough to be off, but we will see. All right, guys, I'll show you what I did. I drew a center line on my hand guard across the top of my um, gas block and a uh, line off the barrel, indexing it off the center line of the uh, gas port. And I just did this with pencil, so it'll erase off. And now we're going to go do the function check and see if that helped any.